Brittany from the Clinton Macomb Public Library. We are here to do some messy art projects that can be easily done outside with really simple supplies that you pretty much probably have most of them already in your house. So the first one is one of my favorites. This is marble painting. How you do this is you need a box or a tray, something to put a piece of paper in. You need several cups and some paint. So I've already started pouring paint in these cups. I'm gonna add the last bit of paint into this cup. You don't need too much in there. And then you're gonna take some marbles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a marble in each of these. And I'm just gonna kind of twirl it around so that it gets color all over it. And so marble painting is super fun if you've never done it before. It's very easy to do and pretty much kids of any age can do it. So when you've got the paint in there, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna drop the marble. And you can either do it one marble at a time or you can do it like I'm doing it. And you can put all of your marbles in at once. Okay, so once you have the marbles in, you're gonna simply take it and you're gonna start rolling the marbles around. Super easy. If you run out of paint quick, you can always re-dip. So I can grab my pink one, which it's hard to identify at this point which color is which. Redip it, go in for round two. We'll just do one more that way. We'll go ahead and re-roll. Okay, and there you have it. Once everything's dry, you have a pretty cool piece of art. And while this is messy art, we didn't get too messy and it was a lot of fun. You can do this in other ways too. You can um, tape like a letter down for the kid and then they can, um, you can use it as a stencil and they can marble paint over it. Um, you can do a design on there. Um, you can then have them do something else on top of it. There's tons of ways to explore this. You can do it one color at a time and watch how the colors mix and what they do. Um, it's just a really super fun, easy art project that you can do. All right, so one of my favorite messy art things to do is exploding paint. This is a really fun one to do in a group too. So if you have a group of like 10 kids at your house, it's really fun to give them two um, of these canisters full of paint and have everyone put the Alka-Seltzer in at the exact same time and watch the kids scramble to try to get this paint exploded before the other kids' paints hit them. So this is really fun. What you need for this is paint, obviously. You need um, canisters, however many you need, with the lids, that's really important. And then you're gonna need Alka-Seltzer's tablet. I usually use half for each um, canister, but for this, I put about half parts paint And I just fill up the canister and then I do half parts water. Nothing super special about what I'm doing. I'm gonna cap them. And then I'm gonna make sure that they're, that you shake them up. And then we are gonna take these outside and we're gonna go ahead and explode them. All right, so now that we're outside, I have my half a tablet of Alka-Seltzer's and we're on butcher paper. I'm gonna go ahead and see what this looks like when it explodes. All right, our next thing we're gonna do is balloon art. Um, you can do this a lot of different ways. I just poured a bunch of paint into the same box I was using for marble painting. Um, as for the balloon, a lot of people just dip it into paint and then start blotting and using their butcher paper to see what kind of different creations. Another way you can do this is to fill the balloon and get it all messy with paint and then pop it. That's gonna be your messiest art that you do. As you can see, there's just paint everywhere. It's one of the best, most fun things you can do, and that's a real good way to explode some paint.
All right, if you aren't sufficiently messy enough yet, let's do some feet painting. You can either keep your feet there, you can wrap it in saran wrap, or one of my personal favorites is to use bubble wrap and make a really cool design. We're gonna use our same butcher paper that we were using. I'm gonna use my same paint, and I'm going to walk my feet in that very carefully. It's very slippery. And I'm just gonna walk across my butcher paper. It does make some cool designs, but mostly it's just kind of fun to do. And it is super messy, so again, if you haven't gotten sufficiently messy today like I have, maybe you should redo these experiments. All right, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Brittany from the Clinton McComb Public Library and today I'm here to share with you some really cool math um, related activities that you could do at home just using objects that you might already have in your house. The first involves a Jenga board. So you're gonna follow all of the typical rules of Jenga. So if you've never played Jenga before, you stack your tower like this, and then one at a time, a player pulls a piece from the Jenga board, and then they put it on top. The only real rule is you can't take from the top three, and the first person to destroy the tower is going to be the loser for this game. But this has an added math element. On each Jenga board, I've written a math problem. And so if you're playing the math version of this, what you would do is students would have to solve the math problem, and if they get it wrong, they have to go again until they get one of the math problems correct. Now this is really fun because it does add an extra element to Jenga that helps with learning. And if you have someone who maybe doesn't want to do flashcards or do anything like that, this can be an excellent alternative to those flashcards that maybe are just a little bit more tedious to use or have your student use. Um, this has simple math, so this problem was nine plus nine. Um, but you can make this any equation that you want. So if you are working with older students and maybe you already have the addition side, you can have them do multiplication instead. If you're working with students who are doing division, you can have them do division instead. Or you can do any type of equation that you want with this. So this Jenga board is just a really excellent, um, just being able to change Jenga up a little bit. It's just an excellent way to reuse Jenga in a way that maybe you haven't thought before. The next one uses a deck of UNO cards. And again, this is a math game. So I wrote out the rules for the visual learners. Um, but essentially what you do is you take a regular deck of UNO cards and then you assign the colors of movement and then skip and reverse the movement. So for example, if you had red, what you would do for that is you would touch your toes. And so if I drew um, a red skip card, um, I would have to touch my toes and just do the normal action one time. And so um, if I drew like a blue five card, my blue rule is jump in place. And so because I have the number five, you can jump in place five times. And this is great for students who are just starting to learn numbers and just starting to learn colors um, and maybe are too young to play Uno. Um, this is a great alternative to that. Um, for this game, wild, you would do all of the four color movements for wild draw four, you would do all four of the movements alone. And if you draw two, you draw two of the colors, um, two cards, I mean, and you're gonna be able to do those movements alone by yourself and you have to draw two for that. So it's just a really fun way to use Uno in a way that maybe you haven't used before. And so these take two games and they change them up a little bit. So another great math activity you can do that's super simple is math bowling. All you need for this is a beach ball or another ball and bottles. And so you don't even have to have the same bottles. I just had 10 bottles and all I did was with permanent marker, I wrote the numbers one through 10 on each bottle. So this one had four, we have one, and I put them in whatever order down here. Then you take your beach ball and you roll it towards the bottles. And whichever ones you knock over, you can count. If you have a child who's younger than that um, and maybe can't add yet, you can always identify the numbers that you're knocking over if that's what you're starting to work with. If you have a child who's past addition, you can always move on to multiplication. Um, one thing to note is if you have a ball that's a little bit heavier than this beach ball, you can always add water to these balls to make it more of a challenge to knock down so you're not just knocking down all 10. This is a super easy activity, and on top of helping with math, it's really great at getting energy out. Having to restack all of these bottles each time does take a little bit of effort, and it, your kid will very much enjoy this activity.